Hey there, and welcome back. Really excited for this video is it's around one of the questions that you see commonly asked online, and that's around the topic of what barrel length should I get in a 308 AR? Do you go with something shorter, compact, and more maneuverable, like a 16 inch, but sacrifice some velocity, and with that, effective range? Or do you go longer with a 20 inch, where you have more velocity, more effective range, but you give up some of that maneuverability, and you get a much more awkward package, especially when suppressed? So what I hope to do in this video is give you real world side-by-side -side data to compare each of these barrel lengths and show you what they're capable of out to distance. So from here in this video, we're gonna move into a quick gear review where I'll give you a close-up look at each of these rifle packages and how they're set up. Then we're gonna move down to 100 yards where I'm gonna give you a baseline of accuracy and velocity on two different loads that we're gonna be shooting out of these rifles. And from there, we're gonna start shooting steel. I think we'll start on steel at about 600 yards and we'll push out from there so long as we're making consistent hits. So if you like the sounds of that, stick around. Let's move into a quick gear review, and then we'll fire these rifles up. Let's take a close-up look at the gear we're going to run in this video. As you can see, we've got a pair of SR25s that we're going to be running side by side. And on my left is the SR25 APR, or Advanced Precision Rifle. Now you think about what this rifle is. This is a 20-inch purpose-built precision rifle. It's designed to shoot tiny groups and shoot consistently out to distance. So it's gonna do really well, I believe, in this video. From my prior experience, this is about a one MOA shooter with a 175 SMK, so it does shoot very well. I've made a ton of hits with this out to distance and I hope to show you that here in the video. The rifle itself is a total Knight's package, Knight's SR25 lower, Knight's APR upper, with a Knight's CRS suppressor. The one thing that is different is the Geisley SDE trigger that I've installed to make it just a little bit easier to shoot accurately. For an optics package, we're going to run the Night Force Attacker F1 5 to 25 with a Trimmer 3 reticle. You think about a Precision 308, yes, this is kind of a larger scope. It's heavy, kind of bulky, but I really like that 5 to 25 range for a long range shooter. That 25 power gives you enough to zoom in and shoot those tiny groups at 100 yards but also be able to see downrange what you're shooting at, spot your impacts. And then if you need to, you can back off to five power and get a huge field of view. So that is gonna be the 20 inch rifle that we're gonna run. For the 16 inch rifle, we've got the SR25 ECC or Enhanced Combat Carbine. Now you think about this rifle, it was built more with a carbine roll or a combat roll in mind. High round count, lots of wear and tear, tough conditions. This runs a chrome line barrel that in my experience is not going to be as accurate as what we're going to see out of the APR. So while we're going to sacrifice a little bit of accuracy out of this rifle, it's still a great shooter. It'll still make plenty of hits. I love shooting this thing. It's going to represent 16 inch performance, no problem. The rifle itself, again, is a total Knight's package with the exception of the suppressor. So the lower is a Knight's SR25, also equipped with an SDE trigger from Geisley. Upper is the Knight's ECC factory upper. But the suppressor I'm really excited about. So this is the Griffin Armament 30 caliber HRT suppressor. They sent me this to use on the channel. You're gonna be seeing lots of Griffin Armament showing up because I got a couple of cans to be running. I'm really excited about this. I cannot wait to see what it sounds like, see how it shoots, give you my impressions after I put some rounds through each of the cans that I've got from Griffin Armament. So far, I'm really impressed with this dual lock method. So the dual lock, you think about how this attaches. It's got the collar here at the rear that you can push up into kind of an unlock position. And then the can either threads on or threads off of the mount. So underneath the mount, there are some threads. And to install it, you simply thread it on until it bottoms out. And then you just move this collar either to the left or the right position, and then it drops in, locked in. Very solid lockup, really easy to install. Like how tight it locks up. So far, initial impressions, really nice suppressor. We'll see how it runs out here at a distance. I think it's going to do just fine. I think it's going to sound great. As you can see, it's got a little bit more volume than the CRS. So a little more volume in theory might be a little bit quieter, a little bit less blowback into the system. We'll see how it runs. For an optics package on this rifle, we've got the Arkin EP5 5-25. Now this is pretty cool. This optic was sent to me for use on the channel. But you think about what this is. This is a sub $500 scope that we're going to be running side by side with a $2,500 scope. Now, I didn't make this video to review these two optics, but it will be kind of fun at the end of the video to see how these stack up. You gotta let me know in the comments. Are you gonna notice anything between the two optics when we're looking through them or how maybe they run? But uh, for myself so far, I'm really impressed with this five to 25 
from Arkin. This thing is a really nice scope for the money. Glass is nice. I really like the reticle. This also runs a Christmas tree style reticle, which you'll see in the video. Now from there, what are we going to run for ammo? This is going to be a really fun part of the video. So we've got two loads that we're going to be shooting. The first is going to be the Winchester M118 long range load. This is a factory loaded ammo from Winchester. It's priced decent for match ammunition. Runs the 175 SMK bullet. Then we're also going to be running the Ally Munitions 176 A-tip load. Now I'm really excited about this one. Ally Munitions, you've seen them several times on the channel already. They've stepped up big time to support me. They've sent me a ton of great ammunition to use and some gear to run, and I'm really thankful for their support. I'd ask that when you make your next purchase, whether it be ammunition or long-range shooting or hunting gear, think about Ally Munitions. Great folks, great customer service, and great products. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to run each of these side by side. So at 100 yards, I'm going to give you a look at velocity out of each of these and groups out of each of these as a baseline. Then we're gonna push out on steel. I think at about 600 yards, I'm gonna run the M118 long range, and we'll see how the drop compares, what the hit percentage looks like out of the M118 long range, out at a two-thirds ipsic. And then when we push further, we're gonna run primarily the 176 A tip. So my plan, when we get out to about 1,000 yards, I'll put probably 10 rounds of M118 long range through the APR just to give you a look at how it performs. And then we're gonna run the 176 A tip out of both rifles. So the things we're gonna be comparing in this video, at 600 yards, it'll be drop for M118 long range. And then when we get out to 1,000 yards, we're gonna be comparing the 176 A tip to the M118 long range out of the APR. And then out of both rifles, the 16 and the 20, I'm gonna compare the 176 A tip. So that's gonna give us a look at drop out of the different barrel lengths. And from there, if we're making consistent hits, we'll push out further and see if we can connect. So let me know in the comments, how do you think each of these rifles are gonna perform? Do you think we've got consistent shooters out to a thousand yards? Do you think we'll be able to push further? What do you think about maybe the M118 long range versus the 176 A tip? What's your expectation there? I'd love to hear it. Comment down below while I'm shooting and I'll catch you at the end of the video with a quick summary. So I just finished shooting at 100 yards with the 20 inch APR and the 16 inch ECC. So really quick, let's review the results. So first up, I ran the 175 SMK M118 LR load across the chronograph with each rifle. With the 20 inch APR, we got five rounds averaging right at 2600 feet per second with a decent SD. Nothing spectacular, but definitely good enough to shoot out to distance. So 2600 is moving pretty quick for a 20 inch. Typically, I think that runs about 2570, 2580. But uh, that's what we're going to run with is 2600 feet per second in the calculator and see what our dope looks like. For the 16 inch ECC, we ran five rounds across the chronograph and it measured right at 100 feet per second slower at 2500 feet per second. Again, SD was fine, very normal, nothing spectacular. And in our ballistic calculator, I'm going to run 2500 feet per second. Now for groups, we have two very different stories down here. So the first group I fired was five rounds through the APR, and that's here. Those measure right at one inch. So five rounds right into an inch, call that one MOA. Very nice for precision rifle. Again, APR, advanced precision rifle. So that's kind of the expectation. The ECC did all right. There's one flyer here that really ruined the group. That was my first round. But if you measure the flyer, you're at two and a quarter inches, 2.25 MOA. I don't really know what the flyer was. Could have been me, could have been something in the ammo. I don't know. I can't blame the rifle because the other four rounds stacked in there, that was something uh, maybe out of the ordinary. We'll see if that shows up when we start to shoot out to distance. So really great performance with the 118LR. Next up, the Ally Munitions. Now remember, the Ally Munitions 176 A-tip load is for bolt guns. I decided to try it in my SR25s just to see what would happen, and I'm pretty happy with the performance. So that target is right here on the back side. I actually fired this after the 175s. And here are my two groups. Now across the chronograph, the APR ran about 2535, so it ran about 60 to 70 feet per second slower than the M118 LR. 
And then through the 16 inch ECC, about the same trend, about 24, 35, 24, 40. So about 60 to 70 feet per second slower than the M118LR. So cool to see that trend. How did it group? Well, here are my two groups. So the APR, you can see grouped right into an inch and a quarter. So I'll take that. That's a very good group for an auto loader. And then the ECC seemed to do a little bit better with this load. And you can see it's measuring uh, one and a half inches. So the four stacked in there pretty good, but we still have the one flyer. I think this was my second round, if I remember correctly. Those groups, very, very nice. With that 176A chip, it's going to be fun to see how it compares to the 175 SMK once we start to push the distances out pretty far. So with that, let's start shooting some steel. We'll use the 16 inch to put our first rounds on steel. I've got a two thirds Zipsic out there at 635 yards and a handful of the M118LR rounds loaded up. Now this rifle's calling for 5.6 mils of elevation. Get out there, so I'll dial that on. Windage wise, man, it feels super calm. That wind flag appears to be pushing just a bit right to left, but very little. I'm going to hold dead on the plate. Packed on the left edge. Packed. That's upper left corner. Let me hold right edge. Impact. 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 So as you can see, 5.6 mils is just about spot on for the 16 inch rifle. Now we'll swap over, run the rounds for the 20 incher. Same course of fire with the 20 inch, two thirds Ipsic, 636 yards. This is calling for five mils of elevation and I'm going to send this first round just holding on the plate. We'll see where we're at. Impact. No call. Impact. Go to 5.1. Looks like I need to cheat left just a little bit. Pack. Pack. Just over it. Pack. No call. Pack. So as you can see, 5.1 mils with a 20 inch seems to be just about right. Call that a half mil advantage to the 20 inch. From here, we'll push out further. Here we are back at 1,035 yards. I've set up a full size Zipsic down there and I've got both of my rifles. What I wanna do back here, I'm gonna shoot the 16 inch first. I'm gonna run the 176 A chip from Ally Munitions through it. That higher BC bullet should give me a better chance of consistent connections out there. Then when I swap over to the 20 inch, I'll run a handful of the M118 LR through it and then swap to the 176 A chip so that you can get a comparison of how the different bullets perform as well as the different barrel lengths. I think this will be kind of a fun little comparison. So out here, the 176 A tip is calling for 13 mils out of the 16 inch barrel. It's worth noting in this Arkin scope, I can dial all of that in. When I swap over to the Night Force, something about this trigger cam and the Night Force, the more I dial, it blacks out the image. So I can only dial a certain amount and then I have to hold the rest so that you can see it. So with that, and it feels super calm. Wind flags pushing left to right. Let's go one mil. Okay. 
Like that was right by the black dot. Huh? Okay, that one went just over the shoulder on the left there. Back. Those are stacking just on the left edge of the plate. Cut our wing back to something like that. Just over the head. Windage look good. Back. So, I'm not going to keep sending rounds. We'll save some of these for some further distances. So, as you can see with the 16 inch, I'd call 13 mils. Pretty solid, pretty consistent impact out there. That's fun. First, we've got the 20 inch with M118 LR. Now, to get out to 1035, my shooter app is calling for 12.5 mils, but I'm only going to dial 10 and then hold 2.5. And that's because this trigger cam, something about these night force scopes, when I dial too far, it blacks out the image. It can't see when I dial that far. So I'm going to dial 10 and then hold two and a half in hopes that the trigger cam will catch it. Now, for wind, it feels very calm out here. But when I ran down to set the target, to paint the target, my dust was pushing from left to right. I'm gonna favor left, one mil for this first round. Scope is set to about 15 power. Ooh, wind flag's pushing pretty good. We'll just go one mil left. Okay, so that landed right there in the head, just to the left of the head. So let's go. We'll send one more round. Actually, no. I'm going to cut down to like 12.4. And 0.8. So that also went high. So those are landing up there at about, really about 12. So. We'll go 12 and 1. Back. Back. That one dropped way low. Pack. Like those are a little bit lower on the plate, so it looks like to be about twelve point three. Pack. Off that right edge. Over the head. Impact. So I believe that was five impacts. We're about a mil left. And I think that elevation realistically is about 12.4, 12.5. I thought it would be fun to run some of the 176A tips from Ally Munitions on the full size Ipsic at 1035. Now, it's worth noting, this is my second take with this string of fire. The first one, the memory card in the trigger cam filled up. But while reviewing that, I also noticed I needed to dial down to give you guys a better view. So now I'm at 8 mils dialed. That means I've got a hold for this target with the 176, about 3.2. So in total, we're looking for about 11.2 mils of elevation. 
that seemed to be about right when I just shot this string, but I wanted to redo it so you guys could actually get a view of it this time. So, windage wise, extremely calm. I'm just going to favor left edge of plate. So, we're going to go 3.2. 3 into the plate, and I am about four tenths left. No call on that one. Pat. Off that right edge. Back. So I'm not going to keep burning up this 176 HF ammo. As you can see, it's very consistent out there at 1,035 and 11.2 mils of elevation seems to be about right. So that's a little bit over a mil, call it 1.2 to 1.3 mils flatter than the 175 SMK. Y'all know me, if we're making hits, we're going to keep pushing further. And with that, I've moved the full size Ziptic out to 1,220 yards. We're back on the 16 inch rifle. This thing had great performance there at 1035. I'm going to shoot the 176 ATIP. Again, that higher BC is going to give me a much better chance of connecting out there with consistency. To get out there, this rifle is calling for 17.5 mils. Again, in the Arkin, I can dial all of that versus the Night Force. We're going to have to hold something over. So, wind. My wind flag is pushing left to right. It's left to right here at the shooting position, total gas, but let's go two mils left. So just off that left edge. Elevation looked quite decent. So I went back two mils to the right edge. Same spot. I'm gonna have to adjust my bipod. All going right in that same spot, and my bipods are digging a hole. One mil. Cut. Left edge. Up low. No call on that one. Bipod just keeps digging in. Wind flag's pushing. Let's move out to one and a half. One four. Uh, off the right edge. So we went three for 10 out there, which is not that great actually. But uh, now let's see how the 20 inch does. All right, I've swapped over to the 20 inch here at 1220 yards. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use the trigger cam on this one. I'm calling for 15.1 mils and I just cannot dial and hold enough for you to get a view. It blacks out the image or you're out of the field of view. So we're going to send it without the trigger cam. 
Uh, with that, I've got the 176 A tip loaded up. Still have that left to right wind. I've got 15.1 dialed on. And I'm going to start, let's just go 1.4 left. Impact with the first round. Wow. Impact. The right edge. Increase that to like 1.5. Okay. I'm going to come up a tenth. And I've got to raise my bipod. Alright, 1.5. No call. Oh, that was an impact. Impact. Call. I'm going to cut back to 1-4, left, Ooh, that went off the right edge quite a bit, let's go to like 1-7, impact. Ah, just off the upper right shoulder. Man, what a run with the 20 inch. That was a handful of impacts. Definitely a higher hit percentage with a 20 inch and also quite a bit flatter. So with that, let's go ahead and wrap up and I'll give you my thoughts on running these two rifles. Well, that's all the ammo for this video. From here, let's move into a quick summary around my experience running each of these rifles out to 1200 yards. Now, while I talk about my experiences and the things that I saw, you got to let me know in the comments, what did you think about how each of these rifles performed? What did you think about the two different loads that we shot? Did you notice anything in the two different optics that we ran? I would love to hear it because I've got thoughts around each of those items. Now, the first thing that we did was move down to 100 yards to get a baseline of accuracy and velocity. A 20 inch APR with the M118 load, velocity was 2600 feet per second. And accuracy was right at 1 MOA. That's very much in line with what this rifle normally does. With the 176 A tip load, velocity was about 2535 with a really nice SD. And group was right there in the 1 inch range, maybe 1.1. So overall, great groups, very respectable velocity out of this rifle. The 16 inch rifle at 100 yards, quite different. So first off, the M118 load ran 2500 feet per second. So with a four inch shorter barrel, we lost about 100 feet per second. And then accuracy wise, I really wasn't that impressed. The first round flew high, the next four went into an okay group, but uh, overall it measured two and a half inches and the four measured probably 1.5. So decent accuracy, not sure what that first flyer was if it was me, but uh, overall two and a half inches is what we saw with that load. We swapped over to the 176 A tip where I was much happier with the performance. So for velocity, we saw 24.35, and we saw a group of about 1.5 inches, which is very normal for this rifle. I would call this rifle typically a 1.5 MOA gun, and that's what we saw with the 176 A tip. Now you think about the barrel length differences. What we saw was very different velocities out of each of these. With both loads, pretty cool. So the 176 A tip out of both rifles ran about 60 to 70 feet per second slower, so consistent there. And then between the 20 inch and the 16 inch, both loads lost about 100 feet per second, or both barrel lengths lost about 100 feet per second. So four inches of barrel, 100 feet per second. In my opinion, it did transition into some real differences downrange. Now from 100 yards, we moved out and shot a two thirds zipsic at about 635 yards. We had no problem connecting. Hit percent was very decent with the M118 long range. 
What I noticed there is drop wise, we already started to see quite a difference. So I'm gonna call it about 0.5 mils. I was a little bit wobbly on the tripod, but from what I dialed on the scopes, about 0.5 mils different. And hit percentage wise, we made plenty of hits with both rifles, great performance there. On a reduced size torso, it's 635. We pushed out to 1,035, and this is where we really started to see a difference grow. So what we saw at 1,035, there was two things. Out of the 20 inch APR, we fired 10 rounds of M118 long range, and then we swapped over to the 176 A-tip. Now in that comparison, we saw the A-tip, while it was running slower at the muzzle, was more consistent I had a much higher hit percent. I felt more confident around the shots that I was taking out there at 1,035. And we saw it run roughly a mil flatter. So a mil at 1,000 yards is about 36 inches. So slower bullet, higher BC, still flatter shooting and led to, in my opinion, a higher hit percent. Now part of that might be that M118 long range load is kind of generic, maybe not tuned to my specific rifle, whatever. It still went 50% on the hit ratio which is fine for this rifle. I was happy with that, but what I noticed is the A-tip outperformed it. Yes, the A-tip is a premium bullet, but as you saw, it results much better out there at distance. Then to compare barrel lengths, we ran the 20 inch with the 176 A-tip. It was at about 11.2 mils of elevation with the 176 A-tip versus the ECC was at about 13 mils of elevation. So two mils flatter shooting with the same bullet out there at 1,000 yards. Now they both made plenty of hits. I was very happy with the hit percent out of this ECC. It made quite a few hits at 1,000 yards on a full-size Zipsic. That is great for a 16-inch 308 AR. Now because we were making hits, I pushed on out even further. We got out to 1,220 yards where we saw a really cool comparison. This is where I think we really started to see the advantage go to the longer barrel. What we saw out there at 1,220, was a higher hit percent. We made five impacts out of 10 versus three impacts out of 10 with the ECC. And we noticed that 20 inch barrel was about two mils flatter. So this one called for about 15.1 mils of elevation versus this was at about 17.5. So two and a half mils advantage to the longer barrel. Now, why does that matter? You think about a flatter shooting bullet, that's more margin of error as you get out there at a distance. So the flatter you can shoot, the likelihood of you making impacts is going to be greater. Now, if you're not going to be shooting out to 1,200 yards all the time, maybe you're going to be shooting 800 yards and in, that's where a 16-inch barrel really might excel for you. This is a really handy package. This HRT suppressor, really happy with it. It seemed quiet. It locked up fine. Accuracy-wise, I think we showed it did just fine. It's 600, 1,000 yards. Once we got out there to 1,220, I think that was more on the shorter barrel and the lack of velocity versus the can or the ammo or anything like that. But uh, you think about 800 yards and in, maybe even pushing out to 1,000 with a premium bullet, you're gonna be there with a 16 inch barrel. Maybe you wanna consistently push past 800 yards. That's where the advantage goes to the 20 inch. You're gonna sacrifice maneuverability. It's gonna be much longer, maybe front heavy. But as you saw in this video with the longer barrel, you're gonna be able to make more hits as you push out there further. Now the last piece, I didn't really intend to make this video a comparison of the scopes, but you gotta let me know in the comments what did you see between the two. Really cool. In my opinion, this Arkin for sub $500 did great out here. No problems. This Night Force, yep, it's a premium scope. To me, yeah, the glass was a little bit clearer. Reticle wise, Tremor 3 is really nice. I also really like the Arkin reticle because it is more open. I found I was able to spot my impacts a little bit better with the Arkin reticle because it was more open. Now on the flip side of that, I prefer the Trimmer 3 because it's got more subtensions in there to hold. So holding wise, I like Trimmer 3. Visibility to what's going on downrange, I actually prefer the more open reticle and the Arkin. The other interesting piece that I noticed between the two scopes is the trigger cam on the Night Force. I really can't dial very far with that. Once you get to about eight mils, which you saw in this video, it blacks out. I don't know why that is. Versus the arc, and I was able to dial all the way out to 17 and a half mils, and you were able to see it through the trigger cam. So something is different there between the sco scopes. Don't know what that is. It's worth noting with the Tacticam, I can dial no problem on this Night Force, but my Tacticam is uh, down for repair currently. But uh, the other thing I noticed on the scopes when I was dialing, the Night Force has 12 mils of elevation on the dial, which is pretty cool. I like that. I've never seen that as an issue. 
what I noticed with the Arkin, this has 10. And for me, it's a little bit easier to think through dialing 10 mils back to zero versus 12 and around. So maybe some small differences that I noticed. Pretty cool that a sub $500 scope held its own out here out to 1,200 yards. Now with that, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate you sticking around. Thank you for watching this video. I'd ask that you help me grow this channel. I've had a ton of growth recently, and I appreciate each and every one of you that have stepped up to support the channel. Now what can you do to help me grow? It's interact with this channel. So if you like this video, drop a like. Comment down below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What did you see in this video? What do you think about the two different barrel lengths? What are you running and what's your effective distance? And then finally, the best way to support this channel is to subscribe. So if you subscribe, you'll be in line for my next video drop. You'll be there to see it right when it drops and share it with me. I've got a ton of really cool things in the works and I hope you're excited about it. I hope you'll subscribe to check it out when it drops. Finally, don't forget to check me out on Instagram at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact and chat about what I'm working on. So from there, thanks for watching. Hope you'll stick around and join me in my next video.